Hello Dance Channel TV, I'm Stuart Brazel and I'm here in my hometown of Columbia City Ballet for a very, very special and dear to my heart featured artist piece on my artistic director, William Start of the Columbia City Ballet. So let's start at the very beginning. How old were you when you started dancing and where were you? Okay, so Stuart, I was born in Palm Springs, California and I danced with my sister um, at pole parties and PTA meetings when I was five years old. I had a little dance team and okay. my mother sorority sister taught dancing. I, I enrolled in the San Francisco Conservatory of Dance and I toured the Orient at the end of the year and I got to go to high school that um, was an art school. It was called the Nova Academy and it was called the Ballet Celeste and this is where Cynthia Harvey who starred with ABT for so long was with and by this time I was like a sophomore in high school and the Royal Winnipeg Ballet offered me a scholarship to come to Canada. So I left San Francisco, I went full scholarship and I studied for a year with the Royal Winnipeg Ballet in their professional program. And I studied with Vera Volkova, who had, who was Rudolf Nureyev's teacher and who was the director of the Royal Danish Ballet. Later I got into the Royal Winnipeg Ballet and I lied about my age again, of course, like I always do. And I got into the company, I think I was 17. And I returned to Banff the following year, I was a soloist. So I was with the Royal Winnipeg for about three years, and Brishnikov defected. Uh, and he first tried out his partnership with the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. So he pr really pr premiered in the Western world with Gelsey Kirkland in Winnipeg. And they wanted to choose a place where they wouldn't be seen so much and they could test out before they opened at the Met. And I, at that time, was uniquely the only male soloist. There were female soloists, but I danced core parts and corsair pas de deux, our principal parts, and I just latched onto Misha. I could see how incredible he was, and he coached me. He was there for two weeks with Gelsey. They worked on Don Quixote and some other things that they were going to do with the map. And Misha coached me every day, and I just could see this. At that time, we had never seen that kind of capacity physically. And he coached me and trained me. We became great friends. And then I just got in the bug. I wanted to move to New York. So I was with the Royal Winnipeg about four years, and I moved to New York. And I had been auditioning for New York companies. As an American, I had never danced in the United States professionally. I'd only really danced um, in Canada. So um, I spent the summer with Andre Glevsky, with the Glevsky Company. And he had me dance Ball's Fantasy, which was a ballet that Balanchine had created for him. And it was this original version that Balanchine had first done for him, and he picked me to dance his part. And it was this performance in Long Island, and it was reviewed by The New Yorker by Arlene Crochet. And she gave me an incredible review, and I had been auditioning for ABT for like three years. And that morning when the review came out in The New Yorker magazine, um, Lucia Chase called me on the telephone that morning. And she said, William, can you come down to the studio, my dear? We're having, uh, we'd like to look at you again, or something like that. And by 10.30 that morning, I was in American Ballet Theater. So I got into ABT, and uh, it was just an amazing time to be in the company. Fernando Bajonas, and Kirk Peterson, and Misha, of course, was there, and uh, Clark Tibbet, and um, Anthony Dow was guesting. It's just an unbelievable time to be in the company. I had also been auditioning for Mr. Joffrey. So I went over to Joffrey, and I had you know some wonderful parts, and I did... Mercutio and Oscar Rice's new Romeo and Juliet, and I did um, The Blue Boy in Patineau, which I had danced with the Royal Winnipeg all over the world. And um, the Winnipeg experience was probably my favorite in retrospect. First of all, I won the medal in the first international ballet competition that was held in Jackson, Mississippi. I, I won the highest American medal. Um, the highest American medal in the senior division that year was bronze, and I won the bronze. And uh, the silver went to Giannis Vicaris in um, uh, Caracas, and the gold medal went to Kafka from Russia, of course. Right after I won the medal, the Joffrey had an eight-month layoff, and a European tour was canceled. Stuart, I was very flexible as a dancer, so um, all choreographers kind of used that ability or, or promoted that extreme flexibility, and probably. I was my own booking agent, so I probably really booked a lot of tours. So I wore out both cartilage and both hips, and I was couldn't walk, actually. As you lose your cartilage, your whole body tightens up, and I was walking on a cane. It was like I was 70 years old, and it took about five years to get to that point, but I had to stop dancing, and then soon I, it was so painful that I couldn't even put on my shoes. So it was a local doctor, and he talked to me about this um, hip replacement surgery, 
and it was resurfacing is what it was called. So they would not amputate my femur. And I was eligible for it, and I was one. I was the first person to ever have two hip replacement resurfacing at one time. This was in 1999, and it was Dr. Um, Amstutz. But um, I did go back to the stage. Um, it took me about seven months of recovery, and I danced to Cinderella, and I was able to dance for another four years. So I got to retire twice. So tell me about your creative process. Well, Stuart, you know, I really, like I said before, I, I look at the person who's maybe not been exposed to dance, and I really am, I think, from ABT in the early days, I'm, you know, it's a really a ballet theater, and and I love the Balanchine Ballets, and I did a lot of that, and I'm so motivated by the music, but I love the additional challenge of being with the music, and so musical, but also telling a story through the dance, and the passion between the two people, and that, um, that it really makes sense. And a lot of it, Stuart, is sort of out of necessity because my passion, my goal has always been wanting everyone to love dance as much as I do. I said to myself, when I became a director, I felt there was a communication problem with my directors. You know, I worked with 40 different companies and I, I felt like the, the directors, I don't know if they weren't sure or they didn't want to get into it with me or they didn't know how to communicate, but I remember being directed that they weren't clear with what they wanted from me. And so I, and that was really frustrating for me. And I wanted to understand what they wanted. Do you want me funnier? Do you want me butchered? Do you want me faster? Do you want me more classical? What do you want? Explain and I'll give it to you, you know? I wanted to please them. So I'm trying to really, really communicate. And they're not making a lot of money. So my gift to them is really as artists and refining them and developing them. And they really understand my corrections and working with them is a gift. And and they see my passion and how much I care about them. And yes, I won medals. I'm very into the technique and lots of turns and big jumps and all that. But I'm much more into telling the story and the relationship and why they're saying what they're saying.